said before in previous videos that the light in here at night in the kitchen is absolutely unbelievable. So, I've got the ring light on and I hope, I hope that's a wee bit right. right, we are going to make some a shortbread for a hug money, which is tomorrow I'd say in the last video that a shopping haul was going to get put up first before I did the shortbread, but I have tried for 24 hours to no avail because of our dodgy internet. Wanted to get John Paul's one up and for I think it was just over a minute long, maybe two minutes. I don't even think it was two minutes long. Anyway, that took five hours to go up. So I was planning to do shortbread. I have made it all December long for gifts, for posting, for saving for ourselves. And I didn't think I was going to be making it again this year, but my friend has asked me if I can indeed pop the video up and do a video on making shortbread. Uh, you can't have New Year's Eve or New Year's Day without a wee bit of shortbread. A wee dry. Right in the background there, it's over there. I'm just going to make a little a cup of a chat first and then we shall begin. December. I must have made shortbread about six times. That's alright because everybody got it. And uh, there's just a little bit left. I cannot indeed be eating this. Trying to unwrap it. So there we are, that's what we're going to be making again tonight. Scottish. Is that a focusing? Lovely Scottish petticoat tail shortbread. Baking paper, that's what I'm talking about. And then in a poly bag. Or a ziplock bag, and then I was lucky enough to have this box. There, there we go. Or in an old quality street tub. You must have loads of them because it's crumble time. And then you can store these for absolute weeks and weeks and weeks. You can also freeze them, but there we go. So that lot there is getting left for chai tea. Chai tea with... Um, Cinnamon and orange. And if you do start eating shortbread, you cannot stop. I'm afraid I could eat a whole one myself. But let's begin. We shall start. I'll let that be. I don't really need the recipe, but I did actually want to check. Butter-wise, I think it's 250, so that's why I've got the page open. And it is indeed. It's 100 grams of caster sugar and 250 grams of butter or margarine room temperature 250 of plain flour and that is it so we're going to start off with our sugar so let's go with our caster sugar and i'll pop that onto the scales we have 100 grams excuse me guys so we have 100 grams there we go i have washed my hands and i've got a cut on my thumb so i have indeed after i wash my hands put on clean plasters 100 grams in there and then we will get on to our 250 of butter. So I hope you all have had a fan dabby double dozy crumble. Oh. There we go. What I tend to do, as I've said to my friend, it does make it a little bit sticky and uh, means that you have to add just that little bit more flour when you're forming it into a dough but it works it works great for me so what i'm going to do now is just cube this up Two seconds there we go Now, I suffer with insomniac, so I shall be up tomorrow night for the bells, as we call it in Scotland. Um, or to bring in the new year. But I do not celebrate it, because as far as I'm concerned, into the microwave and keep an eye on it. Until it melts slightly. Um, there's a thing that I do, that my mother... But there is a tradition that I always do because I got it from my mother is about two minutes to midnight I open the doors and the windows and I let the old year out and I let the new year in and then obviously because it's the time of year and it's blinking freezing I shut 
all the windows and doors again. So that's about as far as I'll be getting tomorrow. Right, let's check. There we go, let's check this. You see that? It's slightly melted. I'm going to do it another wee bit longer. Right, there we go. Still a few little lumpy bits in it, as you can see, but it is soft. And I think this is uh, what makes it even better, just in my opinion. There we go, into the sink. <laughs> right, so next up is creaming your butter and your caster sugar together and the plug is away behind me. So I'll go and do that and I will be back in two seconds. There you go, it's like a sort of a custard type uh, mix in there and then we do add our 250 of plain flour. I'm sorry, can you see that? I just serve that in. And then we start the process of Mixing it in. Oh, right, what I was going to say was, I have told my friend that this, indeed, normally for me makes two batches. If I am making, uh, let's see, if I'm making them in circles, you know, where your cookie cutter, then I would have them slightly thicker. But your petticoat, your petticoat tails. As I said earlier, you have to add just that little bit more flour not a lot just a little bit because they melted not a hundred percent melted but the melted butter does indeed make it rather sticky as i said earlier don't worry about the flour it's all right it will come together i have indeed an the whole of December when I was making this, I have only messed it up once and that's because I did not watch it. Right, let's have a look at that. Can I get my hands in that? I think I can get my hands in that. There we go, we're getting there. Right, move my tea out of the way. Check, I've got the oven on. And let me check for you as it's got different ovens. It is 160 degrees. Or 140 degrees centigrade for fan assisted ovens or gas mark 3. Yes, it's very, very low. And if you're just going to do this in a winner, then you would lightly grease an 8 inch or 20 centimeter loose bottom tart tin and then set aside once you've greased it. But as I said, I am going to make two batches as I have done this quite a few times and Two batches comes out perfect for me. Right. Flour it on my hands. Right. Can you see that all right? As I said, the light's terrible in here. Right. Just dust this. As I said, it is very sticky. So let's roll that out onto there, put this in the sink <coughs> and I'm going to get it all covered in a little bit of dusting of flour just to make it a wee bit easier for me. A lot softer than what it would do if you were creaming the butter when it was slightly firmer with your caster sugar right so this is what the recipe calls for right that there but that's not what i'm going to be doing so i'm going to cut this in half see sticky and pull that away there's a shortbread mix and i'll just sit this one
to the side. I have cleared all the worktops before I started. And then we're going to roll this one out. No, we're not. What we're going to actually do is take you over here. And the best shop bed that came out the other day was in these two dishes. Now, this is a tray for doing your pizzas on. And I have put some tin foil at the bottom. And you just make sure you put plenty plenty of butter I'm not going to make it as big as this but just to be on the safe side I shall butter quite a large circle and then I will indeed go over here to my Pyrex dish and I'll do the same I want to keep it in the way, the kitchen's very small, I have to keep moving about, stretching over. There we go. And liberally, you want to do your dishes with your butter. We do not want no shortbread sticking. Not in my kitchen. Right, I hope you can see that, guys. I want up to I lift my dough. There we go, can you see it? So what you do, place it in the middle and gently push out. Move your hand or your fingers should I say. All the way around. See this is why you haven't got to make sure uh, whatever dish or tray you are putting your shortbread on is well greased, buttered, you know what I mean. Right, so that's still a little bit thick in the middle. So I just gently, just take your time with it. Gently push it out to the sides. Until it's almost about the same thickness. And then I will show you what you do with the bits around the side once I've got it to my desired size. You can, as I said, make it as thick or as thin as you like. But if you can imagine, having two of those, these size balls of dough would make it rather thick as far as I'm concerned and it's not it's not what your petticoat shortbread is all about and then what you do get is your spoon the back of your spoon I think that'll be about right push down the edges just slightly And then what I do is I get a spoon. There we go, one I made earlier. And the spoon just gently, just gently ground anti clockwise. Turning your tray or your dish as you go. It also helps even it out. I don't know if the camera's picking up on this. As I said, the light is terrible. Right. Any adjustments you want to do, just go over it, but be very, very gentle. I don't believe I'm making this again, but never mind. Never mind, one can never have too much short breed. That's all I'm saying. Right, that's probably about the size that I want it. Pop my spoon down there. And then I'll do it with one hand. I usually do it with two. And then I just get around and tap the edges. So it sort of kind of seals it and it's not got that jiggy-jaggy look. If you want to keep it like this, 
Oh, Jaggy Jaggy, then that's fine. Have your shot better than me, you want it. There we go. And I do have my oven on. Preheating. And this is meant to go on for 40 to 45 minutes, sometimes 50 minutes at those gas mats. But I have a dodgy oven. I think the seals are on one side. You know the strip you get down the side of your door. I think it's gone. So I basically, so I basically just watch mine like a hawk. I watch it after twenty five minutes, and then every five ten minutes after that, because blink honestly, and see that's a little bit thick over this side. I hadn't noticed. And we want to try and cook it all the same. So we'll just push that out a wee bit more. Makes the circle a wee bit bigger as well. And same over here. It's easy peasy, easy peasy, Lindy Lou. Right, so that's me done my top in there. Right. And next. That's basically a circle. I'll be at a dodgy one. I'm not caring. Just you do you as I do me. There we go. And what I do now is with the fingies, just pinch them together like this. You can use the fork. I'll show you the fork method on my next one. I suppose 45 or 50 minutes if you're using double or not the recipe that I made without cutting it in half just pinch your wee fingers together as wide or as narrow as you like my tea will be freezing it's all right right so that is basically that is basically your shortbread. Then we get our knife, and depending how many triangles you want, but I tend to we cut it so it's not right down to the bottom. Obviously, just midway. So that is the four triangles. Five. Six. Oh, these are two big ones. Seven. Keep that big one for Roy. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And this one down the middle is seven. And then you get your toothpick. And you put your little shortbread holes on, like so. And I usually go over it again once it comes out of the oven, because they do tend to kind of disappear a wee bit. In the oven, we get some daddy's cast of sugar, and. We sprinkle it over the top. More of this is going to go on once I've finished as well. And there is one. I don't know. Is that camera picking that up right, guys? Let me know. So there's one, and I'm going to pop that into the oven. I will put that in. In the middle and I shall take oh, I shall take my Pyrex dish out sitting down the bottom and that's where we're going to be putting this one so same again guys let's get my dough I think I'm going to sprinkle a bit of flour on this first same again this one will be slightly thicker because it is a smaller space 
and what you do with this one is same again push this around to the sides so you see it all coming to the end and then press down make sure it touches all the edges do that first make sure it touches i don't know if you can see that make sure it touches all the edges first before you finally fix it before it goes in the oven so there we go that's it see that was an easier one you just fill that little space and like so and then again with the spoon but well, this time with the spoon if you're doing it in a dish you actually push it down with your spoon so all the dough basically meets use my spoon again because it's thicker in certain places than it is in others so that's not what we want I'm just going to push the middle out a wee bit you'll see the difference in them these will be thicker but do not lift them out until they are really really cold as they are very fragile very very fragile when they've just come out of the oven so you need to make sure let me see so you need to make sure that they're cold so trying to get it as even as possible as I said with the last one same as the last one so we've not got too many thick bits at one bit. It doesn't matter if you see a, a few wee cracks, they all sort themselves out. Wee cracks in the door. But you're no rush and if you have got some warmth in your kitchen, I've got a wee bit, I've not got much. Um, tends to be a wee bit more pliable if you've got some heat in the kitchenette there we go I'm just edging that off fixing the edges and with this one what we're going to do is put the spoon down use my knife right with this one I'm going to do the same Do that in threes. There we go. Don't worry about how this looks. Be lovely. So these are going to be thicker. And then what I do with this one is get a clean fork. Get a clean fork and instead of doing the edges with your fingers, because it's in a dish it's hard to do it. So I tend to use the fork for the edges of the ones in the Pyrex dishes and then put the fork down get another I'll have a party for Hogmanay and I'll meet up again in the oven so again I hope that has picked up. I will take photographs at the end. But there we go guys, I'll pop that in the oven now. Then I'll go and set my phone for checking it in a wee while. Ching ching, catches in a wee bit. Oh that's wunderbar. Well welcome back my lovelies and it's now 55 and a wee bit minutes. Okay let's get in the oven what we've got here. There we go. There is one 
Lovely tree there. I have when I came in 10 minutes ago. Taking them out as I thought I was ready. Or I thought they were ready, should I say. And the lights get worse in here, so apologies. And, oh, and when you've got a Pyrex dish, it's very good because you can check the base. The thing with these are very slow and low, as I said. Oh, 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 bunny, 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 and soft. So what I did was just put a knife right down the middle where they were soft and popped them back in for another 10 minutes. Same with these, but as you can see, could you imagine how thick these would be if it was the double batter? Or the double dough, should I say? It would have been very, very thick indeed. This here is your ideal. That's if you're greedy like Roy, but this is your normal petticoat. These ones are absolutely divine, although they are a little bit thicker, and I really should not be touching them. So we're about 55 on these, and now they really do need to cool down. I did, when I took them back out, was re-prick them with the oh, toothpick. And uh, let me see. Obviously, just for the purpose of the video. Oh. And they are a lot nicer when they're cool. But I shall indeed try. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, 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 oh. That's hot, excuse me. Mm -mm -mm. I don't know if you heard that crunch, and they are so buttery. I am indeed going to pop these in just for another five, I think. Just so the base is right. And obviously, because it's quicker, it takes slightly longer, even though it's a very, very low. Very, very low oven, but there we go, guys. So, there you go, guys. I'm having another bit. I'm going right in. Look at that. Absolutely gorgeous and buttery and oh, num, 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 num. There you go, Linda. Um, oh, I shouldn't speak with your mouth full, but I can't help it. Look at the shadow in this kitchen. That's worth a ring light. Anyway. I shall pop a couple of photographs up once they're all done. And, uh, and I hope you enjoy making them. And I hope, keep your fingers crossed that this video goes up for tomorrow for Hug My Nae. So you can get making them. Oh, delicious. Till the next time. Au revoir. Oh, to the pop my eyes.